Good evening. I wrap scene with your financial market wrap up and what a day today. Uh, today is Thursday. We're at the 7th of November, 2024 and the time right now pushing on to uh, 6.20 p.m. Central Time. So it was a day where we saw the Bank of England and the U.S. Central Bank both cut rates by a quarter point. The Fed is staying in the camp where they are staying data dependent to a degree, but they are forward thinking. A question that was asked of uh, the Fed chair, would he resign if asked to do so? Because we know that one of the things that was said during the campaign by President Trump was he'd like to get rid of the Fed chair. Well, the answer is no, the flat no. He will not resign. And can he be fired? The answer is actually no, the proper answer, but there is a yes if he were to do something that caused the firing and it would have to be something terrible. Well, that isn't taking place. So the independence is very clear. Now, does this mean they're going to run into a log jam against each other? I would think so eventually. And I say that because uh, President Trump wants lower interest rates and He'll get that accommodation gradually from the Fed chair, but not in a lot, especially if the programs that the Fed, that the president brings on are causing inflation. Then the one tool the Fed has to fight inflation, as you know, is keeping rates restrictive, which means another term for high. So that's the log jam. It is only November. Don't go down that path just yet. Lots can happen along the way. We're going to hear uh, ideally tonight what China's stimulus package is actually going to look like. What are they doing? It could be good. It could be bad. The copper market, which was down yesterday over 5%, came back today and was up almost 4.5%. So you're getting wild swings in the market. We're not getting any, any indication in the uh, trade of the energy. Normally, if China were doing something very bullish, this would be jumping. We're not getting that right now. I think we're at the point where some short covering is going to hit and further short covering in the bonds and the notes. I think they've gone down to the point where the market looks on the charts. And that's what I'm basing this off of, not the fundamentals, what that looks like to me. The dollar, I think, got solidly ahead of itself. From today's high alone, it was down uh, 80 points, as you can see, finished 61 lower. We're a bit higher in all the currencies, even getting a rally in the British pound here. And of course, uh, Governor Bailey made the statements in the pound, rightly so, that in looking at the new budget that Chancellor Reeves had brought out, the big question is, does it tie the bank's hands? Because spend, 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 just like you want under President Trump. There's one tool the bank has to fight the inflation. It's keeping interest rates restrictive. So we will see what goes on. The good news in America is the Fed is looking very hard at the employment numbers. They are concerned that the data that they've been getting is very murky. And the reason was the two hurricanes. It also looks like we're getting another hurricane that is uh, Raphael's by the name, it's going into the Gulf, but at this time, it does not look like it's going to be a big threat. So that is good news, and uh, it won't be something we have to deal with. Normally in November, when you get hurricanes, they don't often hit the United States. That doesn't mean in this crazy temperature climate we have that that won't be the case. I mean, right now in Denver, they're getting, I think tonight in that whole region, three feet of snow. So applaud it because the skiers will love the fact that they're getting it. If you've been, ever been out west of Denver, it is an outdoor city. I mean, people just love to do things outdoors. It's absolutely gorgeous there. All right, so as we take a look at the markets, well, as you can see, up a little bit, we'll see what they can do with that. Now, before I get into the chart analysis, you're gonna get some data tomorrow. Why don't I go there and get to myself right on the camera? University of Michigan preliminary November consumer sentiment indices. They're looking for a 71 reading. They had a 70.5 in October. When we go to the U.S. grain supply demand report tomorrow, keep your eye on bushels per acre. It comes out at 11 o'clock. The market is, 
coming in with estimates that look a bit lower. We're already getting some planning estimates too for uh, next season. I think it's too soon to worry about those. That's very preliminary as the farmers are just finishing things up. I think they'll want to know in order to do that, uh, what this crop ends up with, what the plantings look like in Brazil. That doesn't mean you do some planning, but you don't have to commit to that just yet. We had this afternoon the Federal Reserve Consumer Credit come out and Americans added $6 billion to credit, but there's a great news. That's eight and a half billion under what the market expected. So let's applaud. We kept our uh, hands not hitting those numbers on the keyboard, buying as much as you normally do. The September U.S. Resolve, uh, revolving credit went up $1 billion and non-revolving up $5 billion. All right. So let's go back to what we were talking about. First off, new all-time high close if the market finished right here, right now in the S&P. You're already up. I've got to tell you, this is historic as I'm talking to you. You're at the 6,000 level, all right? So let's understand that this is something that people dream of. And I believe you're going to go into an accelerated phase into the end of the year. So yes, I look for corrections now that the markets had a pretty big week of up 4% plus this week and pullbacks. But I think whatever you're here, you're going to be higher after a correction just because of the seasonality, how the money works in the market. Now, the higher you go, you've got to get concerned about one thing and eventually it will come home to roost. These P.E. ratios, is the market getting super expensive? Will we see rotation because of that? Well, that brings out markets that haven't had the big moves, such as the Russell 2000, and that's why they're becoming leaders right here. When you come to the S&P, you can see how the market has stepped out over the past 72 hours, and that's what it's taken, and it's gone bonkers to the upside. The pattern is still one of a lower and low, higher high on the daily chart. The battleground, you did get under the 18-day average, couldn't make it to the 100, and you've given a pop. So where are those Bollinger Bands? Well, you're fighting right at the top ones right now. You're literally on them for all purposes. And where did you stop the break? Right at that number. Now, this market's coming out of sideways action. You see that? Could it accelerate to the upside? That's what you've got going on. But this type of pattern, however you accelerate, normally brings the market back. That doesn't mean I'm bearish. Back to a more reasonable entry, maybe, of entry. When you take a look at, are you overbought or oversold, overbought? So I'll stay with what I teach, stay with what I preach, and understand that, yeah, I want to be a buyer. Now, do you do it off this chart or the weekly? Well, tomorrow we'll cover the weekly and you'll get an idea. In the NASDAQ, you're now over and up the upper Bollinger Band. You're overbought again. You're coming out of this sideways action. This could turn out, and I think it has been, a base. That's what I think you're going to see in a number of these markets. So I'm not looking for these lows to be taken out the rest of the year. That's a pretty bold statement. But if you're going to get that year end rally, we're already in November. That's the numbers I don't want to see taken out. The Dow's the same thing. I don't want to see that. And look at how the market's suddenly broadening out just like that. Overbought, yes. Honest still, yes. Where would you put a stop on any of these if you buy it? over the past 72 days. Under the current lows, you need a better chart pattern off the daily chart. That's the point that I'm making. And this market, look at this, another base. So that year-end rally, remember I had done a report for you on that? I hope you do pay attention to what I put out on those. And I showed you on Season X how the markets move to the upside. Well, it's exactly what we've got going on. And that's what I'm looking for. The more research uh, shows the same thing. There's a buy this week in all the stock indices. I certainly agree with them, but I'm, not, I, I'm telling you, I would not tell my subscribers to buy over a Bollinger Band. Here's why I think you're going to get a rally in the notes and the bonds. You've left the bearish embedded reading. Normally, before you get back under these lows, you make a run to the closest moving average at this time. That's the 18-day average. Big resistance here at the combination of the 100-day average and the upper Bollinger Band. The same picture is developing in the five-year note. 
obviously in the bonds too. So there could be more of a rally that is coming in all this. And last in the dollar index, you have a market that got up to the Bollinger Band being thrown back in. If it drops tonight, look for the support to come in around the 103.90 level as the market tries to figure out what's the next trend trade. What we did is we certainly broke out to the upside, but now it's pulling back in. And I'm looking for more of a signal that I can get it and play something like that if it will allow it to uh, develop. And that's going to be the big question, if it can develop. Here's that season X, and I just want to show you what I've got here. When you look at this, you do see what this market normally does from this November time frame. You can get this correction through here. That's the election time. Remember, this is a chart. This is a five-year, so it's only one election in there. When I go back to a 55-year or a 25-year, 30-year, I, I give you all the different variances. You get a markets that often run. Now, I want to make something clear. I use the word often. doesn't mean they have to. Past performance, I wish it could be, hey, it predicts the future, it's going to do this. No, 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 no. It's what typically has happened, and it's no guarantee it will happen. Use that with your grain of salt and understand the thinking of it. With that, I'm Ira Epstein. You have yourself a great evening. I'll catch up with you tomorrow.